On Friday, April 26, 1991, a violent thunderstorm descended near Wichita. Out of many tornadoes that were spawned from that storm, the one that has come to be known as the Andover, Kansas Killer has earned the infamous status of Kansas's sixth worst tornado on record. Before it was through ravaging the countryside, 75 miles later, it would take 17 lives, injure over 200, destroy more than 1,100 homes and businesses, and exceed $200 million in damage. It ripped through McConnell Air Force Base, destroying over 100 housing units and narrowly missing the flight line with 84 military jets, including two B-1 bombers loaded with nuclear warheads. On a tornado intensity scale of F0, the weakest, to F6, the inconceivable, it was classified F5. Incredible. Only one tornado in 1,000 generates that power. Wind wall speed inside the funnel screamed near 300 miles per hour with a devastating updraft of 200 miles per hour from its quarter mile wide base. It created a sound unlike anything else on Earth. Its voice has been compared to the roar of a thousand express trains traveling at top speed. Massive atmospheric thermal forces. It breathes, expanding and contracting, inhaling warm air and anything else in its path and exhaling it up to three miles into the sky. The vortex spins with such force that living tissue is no match for it. Animals and humans are indiscriminately pulverized and torn asunder. Within the spinning cyclone, the air pressure is very low, about one-third of sea level, creating a devastating internal updraft vacuum. As the cyclone passes over a structure, the higher air pressure inside the building creates an explosion, 
shattering the walls and bursting the ceiling. It can pluck up boulders, trees, and houses and propel them upward at one to two hundred miles per hour. On one occasion, an 80-ton locomotive was carried several hundred yards before being slammed down in casual abandon. Mature trees caught inside the twister appear to have been baked in an oven until they explode outward in charred splinters. The low pressure inside the funnel boils the sap and detonates the tree from the inside out. Tornadoes have been reported in every state, even here in the Nevada desert, 30 miles north of Las Vegas. Although this tornado is on the ground, evidenced by the dirt churning at its base, it is still partially invisible. If the warm air sucked in is too dry, it may not fully condense to tornado cloud till rotational speed increases, lowering the internal pressure. There have always been tornadoes since the beginning of time. All countries and climates are host to them, but the United States as more than anyone else. They have been reported on every day of the year except January 16th. The majority occur in spring between April and June, 
during the change of season, the atmosphere is thrown radically out of balance by stark contrasts in temperature and humidity in two opposing and converging weather fronts. When they collide, they'll condense oceans of air into cyclonic thunderstorms. Like people, tornadoes come in all shapes, sizes, and colors. They can transform themselves in moments from mile-high, rope-thin, spiraling pillars to stubby, mile-wide, marching mountains of gale-force wind. Churning funnels may split into two or more vortices, or even merge. They could be forked, twin, white, black, brown, or even invisible. They usually adopt the color of the earth they draw up. An average tornado is 600 feet wide with 150 mile per hour circular winds and travels only four miles at 35 miles per hour. Driven along by a mother storm cloud, they may break the speed limit at 70 miles per hour or stand in one spot and grind away. The disputed longest path on record was 293 miles, crossing two states. The Lindsborg tornado generated winds between 158 to 206 miles per hour as it passed across the southeast edge of town, injuring six, destroying two homes, and devastating a trailer park. Funnel winds may range from 40 to 318 miles per hour. However, Estimates as high as 379 miles per hour are unlikely to be proved. Heavy objects can become essentially weightless in a tornado under the influence of aerodynamic lift and vertical wind components. It is a surreal sight when roofs begin to lift off homes and cars become airborne. Only a small percentage of a large tornado can produce a 250 mile per hour wind. Consider, a tornado traveling at 50 miles per hour with a rotational velocity of 100 miles per hour. If it contains an additional internal suction vortex with its rotational velocity also at 100 miles per hour, Adding these vectors would produce a 250 mile per hour wind at one point on the tornado. This would be powerful enough to produce devastating damage, leveling well-constructed homes, overturning trains, 
uprooting forests and propelling cars through the air. One of 12 tornadoes that formed near Great Bend, Kansas, it provided an excellent opportunity for wind speed analysis. Recorded at 190 miles per hour, it would have caused major damage had it passed through a city. The first of a family of tornadoes that broke out near Seymour, Texas, this large cylindrical tornado with winds estimated at 200 miles per hour fortunately did little damage, setting down in a rural area. However, the next member in its family set down 35 minutes later and 30 miles further northeast. It cut a path of destruction across the southeast side of Wichita Falls, Texas, killing 42 and destroying over 3,000 homes and businesses. Most of the 800 tornadoes reported each year are in Tornado Alley, an area about a thousand miles wide and running from the Gulf of Mexico to the Great Lakes. This is where the vast open plains provides the battleground for massive opposing weather fronts to clash and wage war. A tornado is a violently rotating column of air, a vortex spawned by a thunderstorm, in contact with both the thundercloud and the ground, often accompanied by a funnel-shaped cloud that progresses over the land in a narrow path. As the iceberg is the visible tip of the great mass below it, the tornado is the tip of the massive violent storm above it, but as it moves, it consumes all that it touches and leaves a wasteland in its terrible wake. The time-lapse of this supercell tornado reveals the extensive length of the funnel into the storm cell.
in a two-day outbreak, producing 148 tornadoes. This mile-wide monster, packing winds near 260 miles per hour, ripped apart a large steel-reinforced school just 20 minutes after students had been dismissed. Forests of old sturdy trees were reduced to splinters in a matter of moments as it raged on for 22 miles, killing one and injuring 12. Although peak tornado hours are from 3 to 7 p.m. during maximum solar heating, they have been known to drop in any time of the day or night. This deadly tornado serpent with winds in excess of 160 miles per hour took 10 lives and injured 216 as it raged near downtown Dallas. Moving at only 30 miles per hour, it became the most photographed tornado in history. Analyzing the great volume of movies and photographs advanced significant new understanding of wind speeds and life cycles. Destructive power increases with the addition of multiple internal vortices within the main funnel. Clearly evident in the early stages of this killer tornado that went on to take 34 lives and cause $100 million in damage. baseball size hail often follows in its wake. The largest hailstone ever recorded was nearly seven inches across. In the decaying rope-out stage of its life, the alfalfa tornado lurches across the countryside, rapidly changing direction and speed, displaying some of its numerous unpredictable characteristics. At times, it would lose contact with the ground, jumping erratically. Then, unimpeded and unstoppable, it would surge forward once again. This made it especially difficult and dangerous for the airplane that fired instrument rockets into it. A new funnel is born and reorganizes. This is stage two of its life cycle. Maturing here, it continues the march, a new representative to this family of tornadoes.
were destroyed on a half dozen farms across Saline County as this tornado took on an impressive multiple vortex form. Tornado spawning thunderstorms in Tornado Alley are usually produced when a swiftly moving cold, dry air mass, continental in width, comes down from the north at about 50 miles per hour and meets a high altitude 150 mile per hour jet stream that pushes it east. Opposing it is a slow moving warm, moist, tropical air mass of at least 75 degrees Fahrenheit coming up from the Gulf of Mexico. A slow moving heavier cold front would normally slide under a lighter warm front when they meet. However, a fast moving cold front will slam into and run over for several miles, trapping a slow moving warm front. This creates an imbalance, a temperature inversion responsible for the conflict. The trapped lighter warm air wants to naturally rise and seeks a weakness, an escape route up through the imprisoning cold air blanket. The tornado is the form that profoundly marks the escape route, which is usually at the edge of the storm. The thunderstorm created by the temperature inversion can produce a family of tornadoes. The first is born when the upward flowing warm air mass gets squeezed by the cold air front that is also pushing it from behind. Eventually, the cold air will also slip under the upward flowing warm air that is now a tornado, cutting off its life by disrupting the warm airflow. The tornado's life is dependent on the constant upward flow of warm, moist air. Seeking new escape routes, the cycle may begin again in a matter of moments, assuming conditions remain the same. Scientists generally agree that the combination of the thermal force, convection, and the mechanical force of air masses in rotation are the two dominant components responsible for the tornado's creation. Accurate measurements have eluded scientists because tornadoes tend to destroy measuring equipment placed in their path. Tornado chasers hit the jackpot when their knowledge and experience brought them here to Hodges to witness the greatest show on earth, the full life cycle of a tornado. The mathematical chance that a specific location will be struck by a tornado in any one year is quite small, even in an area most frequently subject to tornadoes. The probability of a tornado striking a given point may be once in 250 years. However, a mathematical exception occurred in Codell, Kansas. It was struck three consecutive times on May 20th in the years 1916, 17, and 18.
Crossing farmland, this impressive funnel did little damage, but provided a rare sight, displaying smaller but intense satellite vortices revolving around a common center. These smaller vortices may develop and dissipate very quickly. It is believed they are created when the cold air from above is pulled into the low pressure core of a tornado. It then flows downward to the ground where the descending air flows outward, meeting the inward rushing warm air. The complex interaction at this meeting point can cause the formation of numerous smaller funnels that rotate around or even within the main funnel. Double and triple wall funnels may also be the result of this action. These extraordinary scenes briefly reveal the five stages of a tornado life cycle. Every tornado has its own unique combination of speed, direction, erratic movement, path width, path length, intensity, time in each stage of the life cycle, and variations in each stage. The entire life cycle at Union City lasted longer than most at 26 minutes, with the funnel moving at 20 miles per hour, slower than most. At its peak, it packed winds nearly 260 miles per hour, taking two lives and injuring four during its nine-mile rampage. The mature stage, seen here, is the third level of development, where the funnel extends to the ground, widens, and intensifies. It lasted eight frightening minutes and hit a 500-yard wide damage track. The first level of development is the first sign of visible swirling on the ground. The organizing stage is next, when the visible funnel extends partway to the ground. Seen here is the shrinking stage, and it may be the most dangerous. Wind speeds may increase when the base gets smaller. Finally, the decaying stage, when the power dissipates and the funnel typically contracts to rope thin. A tornado may be preceded by a punishing thunderstorm with rain 
or hail drenching and pummeling the already ravaged land, and is generally followed by a heavy downpour. Since the actual touchdown point of a tornado is practically impossible to predict, statistics would not provide much help. For example, the statistical probability that a 300 mile per hour tornado wind would hit anywhere in Plainfield, Illinois, would have been once in 10 million years. When a tornado roared through town August 28, 1990, killing 29 people. After the tornado left, the probability was still once in 10 million years. This multiple vortex tornado positions itself and like a snake eventually strikes with its deadly venom, lightning. Several tornadoes can be seen at once as the warm air below punctures more holes in the cold air blanket above. One documented account cites 60 simultaneous funnels in a single day. Tornadoes, like clouds, are constantly changing. Their life cycle of birth, maturity, and death may be measured in minutes or seconds. The tornado family life cycle doesn't usually stop there. As one dies, the conditions that form the first will likely develop the next moments later. A series of family members will typically blaze a trail from southwest to northeast for up to 50 miles. Its descendants may be more or less powerful, dependent on the storm producing factors. The tornado is the eye and the most powerful part of nature's most violent storm, with the strongest of all surface winds, whereas a hurricane's eye is the most peaceful area of the storm. However, a tornado's forces are greater in degree than a hurricane's, though less in extent.
This rare anticyclonic tornado is on the ground, in the organizing stage, clearly visible by the dust whirl at its base and a partly visible funnel. Water spouts are the only other natural vortex that is considered a tornado, and only when they pass over land. Water spouts are generally smaller than tornadoes at about 30 to 60 yards wide versus 50 to 500 yards for most tornadoes. In the most intense water spout, the highest wind may be 140 miles per hour versus over 300 miles per hour in a tornado. Dust devils, steam devils, fire whirls, and other vortex-producing phenomenon are not considered tornadoes because they do not connect the cloud with the ground. Most Americans have never seen nor experienced the tremendous powers of a tornado and remain oblivious to its potential. Besides the obvious danger from the mighty wind of the funnel itself, levitated debris encircling the funnel along with lightning and large hail may be just as lethal. A little common sense is your best defense when the weather turns severe. Tuning into your local weather station and taking proper defensive action will likely reward you with your life. Although Doppler radar can give good advanced warning of potential tornado spawning thunderstorms, it can't clearly identify when a tornado touches ground. People that recognize and report a tornado, especially in the early stages of its development, when broadcast warnings can be issued, are still the best defense for saving lives. You're safe if the tornado is north of you, since most tornadoes travel from southwest to northeast. If it's not north of you and you're outside, don't try to outrun it. Lie flat on the ground with your hands over your head, preferably in a ditch. Do not lie under a car or among trees. If you're inside, find a place without windows, the basement, under a heavy piece of furniture, provides the best protection. Generally, put as many walls between you and the outside walls as possible. Choose a closet or a windowless bathroom. If in a public place, choose an area with walls close together without windows, preferably in a bathroom, closet, or hallway.
In this tornado's organizing stage, the low pressure air within the funnel condenses the microscopic water droplets from the incoming warm, moist air. They are now visible as tornado cloud, clearly defining its outline. Before it becomes visible, it may have already reached the ground, evidenced by a dust whirl at the base. Great destructive power is possible at this point. This funnel cloud had touched the ground, it would have been a tornado. Lightning is another deadly byproduct of the tornado. In the 80s, an average of 51 people died each year from lightning strikes, about the same as tornado fatalities. Unlike lightning, in most cases, a tornado can be seen before it strikes and warnings can be issued. Profound testimony exists of this incredible energy-generating machine. Eyewitnesses who stared up into the churning funnel as it leapt over them report seeing it laced with a continuous web of lightning. And reeking with the stench of sulfur and ozone filling the air. Twisters are not restricted to our planet. One observed cyclonic storm the size of three Earths has raged on Jupiter for perhaps a million years. Its wind speeds have been estimated at over a thousand miles per hour. Fear not, make way, for it cometh. Do not hate it, for the path it takes, it owns, and we visit its world. Tornado, child of the sky, that walks upon the land, as we see you, we are forced to wonder, are you the embodiment of the force, energy, the essence of our universe and us? But what do we know about life? What do we know about the force that powers the universe? Does not this planet Earth, this solar system, this galaxy, this universe, spin forever through time and space? Are we not all but dust being blown round in the endless storm of the cosmos? From the center of an atom to the end of the universe, life exists in the energy that permeates everything.